Hello everyone, this is Impulse, and welcome back to the Hermitcraft server. How you guys doing today? I'm doing great, I'm doing great. Look at this guys, look at this. I've got something behind me. And you guys remember last episode we made a deal with Azuma? And look at this, he has already delivered. Thank you log fellas, because they have delivered nine stacks of five different types of wood here. So we got the acacia wood, we've got the oak wood, We've got the jungle wood, we've got the birch wood, and we've got the spruce wood. And I think dark wood's the only one that they can't farm automatically, uh, which is why you're not seeing that. But we got the other five types of logs in exchange. Uh, he's going to start taking some bones out of my system here. So I've been doing some AFKing for bones. Uh, he already took a whole chest, and now I filled this guy back up for him. And let's see, we have some more here. Yeah, we got that chest, this hopper. Oh, jeez. Hello. <laughs> scared me bad. <laughs> Where'd you come from? Oh, then we got this chest here. I jumped. Oh my goodness. I jumped. <laughs> Woo, heart to race it after that. But yeah, business is is good. I, I, I like this deal. We're getting getting wood and definitely going to come in handy. So he can come back and get more if he needs it. I think I got some more downstairs yet. But today, guys, today it is time. I got all these villages in, villagers in here. Nothing I can do with them of yet so let's make something happen here we're gonna do a villager trading hall right here around the perimeter just like I talked about I've got the design picked out and I think I know the layout the door is gonna be right here we're gonna do something cool with that I don't know if we'll get that to that today or not uh, but then these guys are just gonna kinda go around the edges here around this side around this side and around this side and then we're gonna have to change how this all works how they drop down how we get rid of the ones we don't want all that stuff so we got a lot of stuff to do it's gonna take a long time I know it is all these projects always do uh, but let's get started on it today and see what happens and first off I'm gonna go gather some materials I'm gonna put all that wood away before somebody gets an idea that they can just take it I'm gonna put all that wood away in my storage room over there and then I'll gather the materials we're gonna need to start building this thing up and then we'll just get to work so all right see you in a sec all right so I got a portion of this built up just so you guys can see how it's gonna work and as you can see I got a zombie after me <laughs> They set me on fire every time, I swear. All right. Uh, so you can see it's up off the ground, and the reason for this is because this canal is actually how you get rid of the ones you don't want. So when you eject them, they're basically going to come in a, in a pipeline here and make their way around, and then we'll have to send them off somewhere to be disposed of because uh, you don't want them getting killed within range of that village. Otherwise, they will get mad, and it hurts your reputation with them and all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, obviously that's happening right now. With them falling, I, I haven't calculated the range, but I think they're, they might be within range, probably. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not too worried about it. I've never really had the bad reputation affect anything negatively for me. I mean, if there was like a golem that spawned, he might be mad at me or something, but I'm not really too worried about it. Anyway, so we have a system here that's basically, it's a pretty simple system. Basically, we're going to have a water canal along top, and you can see there's some fence gates right here. And they'll be closed when a villager is sitting in here. So we can demonstrate this with a minecart. So we put a, a minecart there. That closes the fence gate. And what that does is allow the villager, the next villager to come in to float across until he falls into this one. And if we want to get rid of the cart, we press that button. It'll fall down below and it's going to get swept away through water currents. So this design was done by SZ Petty. I've used uh, a lot of his designs in the past. Dude is awesome. You guys should check out his channel. I'll put a link in the description, of course. And uh, anyway, so it's pretty simple design here using water canals and then, uh, you know, the villagers and minecarts, which makes it easy for me because all I need to do is kind of pick up a villager with a minecart out of the holding cell, bring him in to the water canal, and he'll just kind of go across. And then we'll be able to make a one wide trading center here. So you can see I've got five slices built up. We're going to have five villagers in it. And uh, it's going to leave us a lot of room. I think we're going to be able to fit about um, 45 <laughs> villagers to trade with, which is an insane amount of villagers. We should be able to get every book we want from that, and that's what we're going for mostly is books. Uh, so a lot of the librarians will spare them, but uh, a lot of the other guys, they're not gonna make it. <laughs> so yeah, this is pretty much it. Um, so you can see here, basically, this is being powered right here, this, the, this detector rail. 
it's flipping these torches and that's going to go to the repeater and that's what opens and closes the gate and then the button just lifts up this trap door and that's what allows them to move out so pretty simple pretty simple to build and it's one wide you know tileable design which is what i liked about it and and i know a lot of other designs exist that are one wide this one's not directional, which means I can take it all the way down, turn it, and then come back around this way. Don't have to worry about what direction it's facing. A lot of the other ones, you can only face them in one or two directions because of the, the orientation of the rails. Not this one. So that's why I chose this design. But the negative part is, uh, because we need this canal to get rid of them, is this is going to have to be a few blocks up. So you can see the actual trading floor is actually going to need to be here, uh, which is three blocks higher than where we were here. So we're gonna have to do something with the outside design to kind of bring you in, uh, bring you up to the floor level as you come into this trading center. And there'll be a little bit of a gap in between this floor and then the trading floor here. So we'll have to just, you know, modify the entrance or something and we'll figure that out. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and build up the rest of the 45 slices-ish, 45-ish. I haven't done a full count. We'll, we'll count it when we're done. Uh, but we'll do a time lapse for that because I got all the materials needed right here. Pretty cheap design. <laughs> Let's get building. All right, there we go. We got the trading cells all done, and there is actually 19 on three sides of this thing. So we got 57 total trading cells, which is amazing. And so the idea here is that we're going to drop them in from over here, and they're going to land right on top of this yellow block. Let's see if we can get up there. And basically, there's going to be a water stream that carries them over, and they'll fall through these gates if they are open, meaning the slot is open, and yeah, and then they'll just make their way around. So basically, instead of dropping them down this, we're gonna drop them into a holding cell, pick them up with minecarts. We're gonna have to make a whole uh, system for that that's kind of callable. Uh, we'll figure that part out <laughs> in a little while, but let's get go ahead and get the water in, and this is kind of scary because if I missed a single fence gate, we are going to flood some redstone, and that's not going to be fun. So let's go ahead and just put that in there. Let it go all the way across. So far, so good. And let's see. I want to put the signs. I guess it doesn't really matter. Oops, unless I fall through myself. Uh, let's get back up there. I was trying to decide if I cared what side I want the signs on, but I don't really think I do. So let's just go ahead and place them this way for now. So we'll put a sign there, and then we need to basically just kind of continue this over and over again all the way down and around the corner so we can put a sign there swap that out and hopefully this makes it around the corner it does good and then a sign there so yes uh, one issue that we might see is that a villager might get just kind of stuck on this block but the next guy will come along and push him off uh, so that will be fine I don't mind if they're just kind of sitting there queued up uh, you know not moving so all right I'm out of water so let me refill and basically I'm just gonna continue this thing until all the water channels are done all the way around all right so I went ahead and put in a 
track here after I got all the water done. And this is going to bring the villagers over and basically, once I get them in a minecart, dump them off into the water stream and then down into their trading cells one by one. So the next thing we need to do here, let me show how this works. This is pretty cool. Uh, this is a design by Unary Bit he came up with because getting villagers out of these tubes is no longer easy uh, because the carts just kind of bounce right off them. But now... Uh, we use this to just kind of come up underneath them, and it will grab them, and then go around the corner, and it will drop down into the trading cell there. And there it goes. And you can see it sits there. So imagine there's a villager in it. He would be the first villager in the first trading cell. And then when we're done with him, we hit the button, goes down to the water stream below, and it's just going to kind of carry him across, you know, this over, and then out that other end, and then that's where we can... Dispose of them, I guess, would probably probably be the easiest way to say that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, now we got one more problem to solve here. You saw we need the villagers actually up there, and right now they're down here. So I've gone ahead and created a temporary villager uh, little elevator here that we're going to send them through. And now kind of the fun part is we get to break some glass, and they're going to go shooting out and into the elevator and uh, yeah, this should be this should be interesting. So let's go ahead and break that. And here we go. <laughs> all right, they're all gonna start making their way up the elevator. There may have to drop some water in to get them all to decide to go. Oh my gosh, there are so many villagers. That is so awesome. And hopefully they are all making their way to where they should be in that holding cell up there. Yeah, you do want to join them, don't you? <laughs> oh, cool. Cool. So yeah, now we can tear down this, can tear down this after they're all up, and let's go up there and take a look, see if they all made it in safely. Hopefully they did, and I didn't miss that ender pearl throw. I totally missed that ender pearl throw. Oh my goodness. Oh man, where am I? I am in the... <laughs> that was bad. That was just terrible throw. Oh, all right, let's get back up here. Man, that went really far. And... <laughs> Hopefully they're in there safe by now. It's, there we go. All right, so they're all standing on this block. I say we should test with one. Looks like, yes, they all did make it. And so now, and then we're also going to need to put a water drop in uh, so the new ones come in. We'll be sitting there, and we don't really care if they're babies or not. They can, they can grow up inside their trading cells, uh, which is just fine for me. And here we go. So we'll change this to a dispenser so I can just automate the sending of carts. But for now, we'll do it by hand. And that should pick one up. There we go. First thing we get is a librarian. Awesome. And let's see if he makes his way into the trading cell. Perfect. Perfect. So now we can just step up and trade with them. 36 paper for one emerald. Not great. Luck of the sea. Eh, it's okay. It's only 10, though. Not bad. All right, so basically now all I need to do is get a whole bunch of mine carts and start populating all these trading cells. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'll do that now. All right, there we go. We got all the villagers in. I did a little bit of cleanup, got rid of all the, uh, the glass, you know, elevators I had and stuff down here that were no longer needed. And uh, put a little bit of glass in just so we could walk around. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the middle just yet. <laughs> These guys are so annoyed. Um, and now is the fun, <laughs> well, not really, tedious part of this project. The vetting of the villagers. And what I mean by that is we have a whole bunch in here that we don't really want. Um, I don't think I'm going to keep clerics. I don't have a lot of rotten flesh to trade. And I'm not going to trade any gold. Um, <laughs> so they're going to go. A lot of these guys are going to go for now. Butchers. Um, I have a few blacksmiths or weaponsmiths uh, down below. I don't think I'm going to keep them around. If I do change my mind, it's easy enough for me to breed some up and get some more in here. Maybe if I... No, I don't really feel like trading and unlocking them. What we need to do, though, is just keep all the librarians, and I want to unlock their trades first and just see what they have. And then once I unlock all three of their book trades, I'll put a sign up here that says exactly what the book trades are and how much they cost in emeralds. And that way, we can kind of keep track of who's selling what for how much. 
and then once we have this thing stocked with librarians, we can decide, you know, which ones got the better deals and decide if we want to keep them or not. So a lot of villagers to sift through. Luckily, I have a lot more up here. Uh, so you can see there's librarians still in there. I'm sure there's quite a few, and it's still breeding. So, yeah, you can see some baby ones even. Um, so they're still filling up here, and I want to make sure I don't overcrowd this place. Uh, so I need to kind of cycle through these. Um, what I'm thinking about doing is, I don't know if uh, if I told you this or you saw it in, in maybe a time lapse, but this whole system of picking them up this way, it works in the beginning, but once the villagers are on this half of the block, the cart just kind of skips past and it's empty. So I kind of came over here and started doing it this way, just kind of pushing the mine cart up manually. So I think I know a way to fix that. We may do that once I get this thing emptied out. For now, I basically just get a mine cart. And let's see if we can just grab one here for demonstration purposes. We'll come up here. I need a better way up and down. I've been using a lot of inner pearls. Uh, and then so I just kind of stand here, give it a little nudge. That goes through. And this guy is a librarian. So we're happy with him. Uh, we don't have to, to kill him or anything. And then we can allow him to go on. Otherwise, um, ooh. <laughs> uh, we might need to get down there and get rid of somebody. Uh, how about you? Bye-bye. <laughs> You're gonna go and so he's gonna come in and fill that spot eventually So that's kind of the idea is we get rid of ones. We don't want we bring in more librarians and then if uh, You know up top it wasn't a librarian. I would just kill him and a lot of people were Mentioning oh, but that's gonna hurt your uh, I think it's popularity It's it's a setting that basically the village itself keeps track of and it's it has to do with you know your popularity with that village I looked into it, it's really nothing to be concerned about. Um, you know, the one downfall is by killing these guys in range of that village, this is gonna stop breeding for three minutes. Um, which, you know, if I'm killing these guys right here, maybe I don't want to happen because I, I want to keep breeding these villagers. So maybe I'll build something up real quick that kind of sends them away and drops them down far enough away from the village uh, that they'll no longer be part of the village and they'll die in like lava or something. And that will be just fine. So, yeah, I'll do that. I'll build that up. But first, I want to get some of these trades going. I'm going to start unlocking these guys. And uh, I, I need to figure out what exactly it takes to unlock them. So it takes paper uh, to get the first one, I believe. You know, or we could trade for one of these books. But I think paper will unlock the first one. And then uh, some other resources we're going to need to start unlocking the rest of the trades. I'll just bring up a whole bunch of those so we can go through every single one of the librarians here. And uh, hopefully I'll get some good deals in the process. So, all right, let me get to uh, get to trading here, and I'll come back when I when I have all that done. The other thing I forgot to mention is that yeah, it, my popularity score might be going down with the village uh, due to killing them in range, but it's easy to make it go back up. And I'll show you how to make it go back up. Here, we might as well get some emeralds for this, as many as we can. We might as well. We got plenty of paper, by the way. Obviously, got my sugarcane farm rocking. So we'll see how many this guy gets. There we go. So once it locks out, we know we're good. And now you can see these green sparklies. This is actually an indication that my popularity with the village is going up. So yeah, I might have killed a few, but I just got some popularity back by trading. And obviously I'm going to be doing a lot of trading. So I'm going to be the most popular person in this village. Assuming we're even in range. I don't know that we are. So it probably doesn't matter. But anyway, I thought I'd tell you that. Oh, let's see what he's got. Might as well. We're here. All right, so we got to do some more trading. See, and then you just go to the last one, and I'll be getting a bunch of stuff I probably don't need, but we'll keep it anyway. Some bookshelves. At least I don't have to worry about crafting those later. And then green sparklies again. I just got even more popular. <laughs> I'm Mr. Popular. <laughs> All right, so let's see if that unlocks more. All right, let's, we'll go ahead and buy some glass. So that's why I wanted to do most of the paper trades until it uh, stopped me from going any further, because I needed those emeralds to unlock him further. And hopefully that's all it's going to take to get the rest of the, the books going. Now we'll see. Uh, this should do it. We should have a book now. Okay, sharpness two, not great. So now to make sure I unlock the next one, I'd actually need to buy one of these, I believe, to get that last book. And that's going to be kind of the pain because I need a, uh, a regular book, which I can get from breaking this bookshelf. That's not a problem. Let's see. Uh, yes, that's fortune. So that will work. So we'll just basically go like this. Get that guy out of there. Now we have books. That's not a problem. 
Emeralds, I don't think is going to be a problem here. Let's, oh, I probably moved them all. I probably moved them all. So I'll have to go over uh, there, grab some emeralds, and then I'll, I'm going to have to spend some emeralds. That's just the bottom line. Uh, you got, you know, it takes money to make money. <laughs> so I'll spend some emeralds and I'll get that third lock unlocked going, third book unlocked anyway. Uh, and then we'll make a sign and, and do that. So that's kind of the method I'm going through. Just wanted to tell you about that plus the, uh, the whole popularity thing. So, all right, back to work. Okay, didn't get much work done, but I did want to come back because uh, I did kind of misspeak on this whole thing. Obviously, if I got this book here, it would have definitely unlocked that last spot, but there's also a chance you can unlock it um, with a random chance deal just by trading anything else. So I'm probably not going to buy books I don't need. I See, I, I messed up. I accidentally bought Luck of the Sea, and that was the first book in the in this that he was selling. And it, it I got lucky, and it unlocked the last one, which is Depth Strider 2, which isn't bad. Not bad at all. I can't complain. Um, but I think I'll just continue to trade paper. That way I don't burn through all my emeralds. Uh, as much uh, and you can see I have quite a few already, but not quite as rich as I want to be We will be before this is all said and done <laughs> anyway. Okay. I'm actually gonna get to work now. I promise for reals Seriously, okay. I'm gonna do it Okay, here we go. All right, so got quite a bit of work done as you can see I got some signs above some of these guys and you can see what their trades are. I had to abbreviate some of them just because there's not enough room on the signs. But you can see Blast Protection 4, 31 Emeralds is his first trade. Then Sharpness 3 is 21 Emeralds and Infinity. Not bad trade there for 14 is his last one. And kind of walk the line here you can see. Uh, but we do have quite a bit of villagers still that are not librarians. Um, so I've done all these. And now what I'm trying to do is actually get them all to be librarians or as many as possible in this episode uh, and so to do that what I'm doing is basically just ejecting the ones that are not vil or not librarians and then they kind of come along this tube and I made this drop it goes all the way down there to lava that's definitely gonna be far enough away from the village that I won't get in trouble for it um, this is a bit of an issue where these signs are these guys get hung up on and so I got to come in here every once in a while and just kind of push them along you can see at the sign there where the water stops it just doesn't pick up the hitbox of the cart to continue pushing them forward so that's kind of a bummer that uh, this is going to require a little bit of maintenance but once I get all these librarians in this whole system's not really going to be needed as much anyway um, just maybe here and there when I decide to look for better ones or something uh, so I'm not too worried about it. It's just a, a little bit of a pain just getting started here. And sun's going down. I'm going to sleep real quick so we don't get bothered. All right, that's better. And so to make sure that all we get here are librarians, I've put together a crude little villager sorting system up here. And I want to show you how that works. Um, so basically, I'm just sending the carts out. And as they go over this, this detector rail here, it's going to flip this rail, send them over this way. And then I can kind of look at him and say, mm, no, you're not a white coat villager, you're not a librarian, you can go. And I send him this way instead. He's going to go off this rail, he's going to land in this water canal here, which meets up with our other water canal down there and dumps him into lava. So uh, I know a lot of you guys are thinking right now, that's going to also waste a minecart. Yeah, I'm not too worried about it, guys. Not too worried about it. With the Iron Titan and Iron being so cheap on the server, uh, I can I can afford a few minecarts here and there. Especially since, you know, Tango's my friend, and I'll probably get a good deal on minecarts, or on Iron anyway. So, all right, let's go through a couple here just to kind of show you the process one more time. Pick him up. He's not a, not a librarian. We'll send him on his way. Flip that back, and then we get another one. And just kind of go through this over and over again. And there we go, this one's a good one. We will definitely want to keep him so I don't touch that. And now I can just push him and he will go the right way. Go over there and drop into our system here. I can't tell where the next one needs to be. Uh, looks like we're all the way down there. So he's gonna go all the way down there, drop in, and we have another librarian to, uh, to check out. And so I'm gonna just try to get as many of these guys out of here as I can with the time I have, and then uh, also do some more trading down below to see what kind of books they have. And when I get done with that, I'll show you how far we've progressed. Bye-bye. All right, look at that, guys. So much time has gone into this, but look how many librarians we have. This is absolutely ridiculous. I didn't get the whole thing done, but there are a few more over here. I think I counted about 17 more that I need to get in. 
three empty slots and then a whole bunch of these guys that aren't librarians. But oh my gosh, I have just about every trade, I think. I, I actually probably do if I look, went down the list and kind of checked them off, which I haven't done. Uh, but there's some really good ones in here if you look. And so it's really nice having these signs to just kind of walk up to and see, okay, if I want projectile protection, I could pay nine diamonds. That's probably just the first tier of it. If we look, I think it was a third trade. So we go all the way there. Yeah, just one. Uh, but you could just buy a couple of these, combine them, and it's probably still cheaper than, you know, if I find one that's uh, projectile protection four, maybe. Let's see if we can find one real quick. And so if you know what you're looking for, you just kind of have to go down. Uh, look at these signs. There's one for two, projectile protection two for 25. So that other one's still better. Uh, protection four. See the, the the main ones there. The when you start getting in those higher tier enchantments, they get pretty expensive. It's almost easier to look at that silk touch five. That's ridiculously cheap. <laughs> that is crazy. It's almost cheaper to buy the uh, like tier one enchantments and then combine them. Uh, you know, it's just going to cost you some books, but I got plenty of bookshelves. You can see I got another mending one. Uh, I had a mending one over there, I think for 20, which wasn't bad. Where was that guy? Uh, looting one, that would be easy to make. Looting three. Feather falling four for 26 is a good deal. I mean, there's just a lot of good deals. Another silk touch, there's a lot of silk touches. Um, LOTS, that's my uh, luck of the sea. Uh, there's no way I was going to fit all that on a sign, in case you were wondering. But I got a lot of those as well for some reason. Just silk touch and luck of the sea, I got a lot of. So you can see a lot of good deals in here. A lot of good deals. <laughs> uh, so this is going to be fun training. There's my mending one. And unbreaking and fortune. That's a pretty good villager right there. I hope I never lose him. Uh, unbreaking too. Be easy to. Uh, Twenty-eight is kind of a lot. I'm sure you could probably search around on other signs and find a better deal to get unbreaking three. But efficiency three at sixteen. Combine that pretty easily. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this is kind of the plan. I just keep keep unlocking more and more trades here and just seeing what we get. And I yeah, just I got a few more to go. But that's gonna be it for me today, guys. This was. This was an undertaking, I'll tell you. You know, obviously we started another project and, and we're leaving the area kind of ugly for now. In fact, before I do my little outro dealy there, uh, let's talk about that because I'm sure a few of you are like, dude, what are you doing? You pretty much covered up the entrance. You got redstone exposed. Um, we are going to build a nice building up around this. It's a you know future project. I like to keep a list of future projects, You guys, as you guys know, that I can kind of hop to uh, whenever I'm not sure you know what I want to do next. And we're going to have to move this, unfortunately. Uh, but that shouldn't be too difficult. I just kind of, you know, chose to come down a little bit, turn, and come down a little bit. Um, that doesn't mean that this can't go a little further and then turn. And then we'd end up, you know, kind of closer to the, the Skelly deal here. So we can push this out, build a building up around it. And then uh, we need to uh, make a proper entrance for this guy. And then build a building around this, cover the redstone, kind of hide all this stuff lot of work there but that should be a fun project and uh, oh my gosh I can't believe we got this many librarians this is just ridiculous I am I'm pretty happy about getting this far today uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode if you did please make sure to hit that like button and of course if you're not subscribed make sure you subscribe before you go and with that said I'll see you guys again next time <laughs> have a good one everyone